What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are talking about the six different components of your investment bank salary. So typically we hear about base salaries and bonuses and that makes total compensation. But there are lots of other components that play a big part in what you get compensated and how long you stay at an investment bank. So today we're going to talk about that. So without any further ado, let's get straight into it. All right, the first component of your salary or total compensation is your base salary. So as a front office analyst at an investment bank, you're gonna be expecting to take home 50 to 60K base. As a middle or back office analyst, you're expecting between 30 and 45,000 base. And so that's your base salary. You get, you know, it's broken up into 12 different portions over the year. You get monthly payments at the end of the month typically and that's your base salary. We all know what that is, so let's move on to the next one. Next, you've got your stub bonuses or your pro rata bonus. So typically when you graduate as an analyst after you do university and all of that, you're gonna join an investment bank and typically you join at the middle or towards the latter end of the year. So let's say Q3. So June, July, August, around that time. And so bonuses at investment banks are given at the beginning of the next year or at the end of the year in some banks. And so if you've only worked for an investment bank for four or five months, you don't deserve a full year's bonus. And so the stub bonus or the pro rata bonus is the bonus that's given to you for the amount of time that you've worked as part of that year. So if you've worked four months of the year, you're gonna get the equivalent bonus of working four months as opposed to the whole year. So that's what a stub bonus is. It's basically a pro rata bonus based on the time that you've done which is less than a year since you've joined as a graduate halfway or later through the year. This brings me on to the end of year cash bonus. So typically at Goldman's, it was in January. I actually got my bonuses on my birthday, January 20th. Some banks do it in March, some do it in January, some do it middle of the year. But I think the general like vibe for most banks is at the beginning of the next year. Um, for the year that has gone by. So your cash bonus, you get told by your manager, you walk into a room, they pass over a paper and you see the figures um, and then they tell you this means this, this means that, blah, 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 blah. It's been a good year for the firm. It's been a bad year for the firm, so on and so forth. Let me know in the comments if you want a video on like the whole bonus process, how it actually happens. But anyway, that's for next time. So you get your cash bonus. So this is gonna be anywhere between 20, 30, 40, 50, to 100% of your base salary, depending on which division you're in. And that plays a big part in your total compensation. So if you're on a base salary of 50K and you get a bonus of 20, 30K, that is a lot of money compared to the base salary, right? So your cash bonus, that's the third component. So we've touched on your base, we've touched on your stub bonus or pro rata bonus, and we've touched on your full year total compensation bonus component. And then we've got stock-based or deferred bonus. So what does this mean? Typically, when you become more senior at an investment bank, when you go from analyst to associate to VP, so on and so forth, your salary or your bonus, a larger portion of it gets given to you as stock in the company. Now, there's a few reasons for this. The company wants to pay you in their stock. So you are, you know, you're a citizen of that company. They want you to act in the best interests of that company. Because if you perform well, if all employees perform well, the company stock increases. And so the stock that you own as part of your bonus, the price of that goes up. Now, also, the company will give you stock to keep you at the company. Because when they give you, let's say you get a hundred thousand pound bonus, right? but 50,000 pounds of that is in stock options. And they say you can only, you only get access to that stock that we've given you, that 50,000 pounds of stock, after you serve another three or four years at the firm. So you need to work another three years to unlock that. Now you do one year, your next year's bonus comes and more of your bonus is given in stock. So then you need to do another two years to unlock that stock. That way the company is kind of locking in its talent at the senior levels. So this is often the case at associate, VP, more so at the VP and above level, especially at managing director level. So it's like they tie you in, it's called the lockup. So you, 
you know, if you want to leave early, if you want to move to a competitor, if you want to, you know, change industry, if you want to leave your job or quit and you're at a senior position, you're going to have to give up those stock options. So you lose a lot of money. So it's smart from the firm's perspective if they want to lock in talent. You can access this money later on. You have to still work for us. That's what they're saying essentially. And that is what a deferred bonus or a stock based bonus is. The fifth component of your investment bank salary is going to be a signing bonus. Typically when you join as part of a graduate scheme or when you join as a lateral hire or an experienced professional, you know, when you join, they give you a golden handshake. It's like a signing on bonus because you've joined, they give you a bit of a bonus. It really does vary from firm to firm and at the level that you join. Typically it might be five, 10, $15,000 for analysts. It might be 30, 40, $50,000 for associates and it gets higher the more senior you are. And then last but not least, you've got other benefits. So typically when you work for a global investment bank, they look after you when it comes to like healthcare, pension contributions, uh, other benefits like cycle to work schemes. So you can buy, you know, bikes to cycle to work, tax free, so you don't get taxed on all of these expenditures. So there's lots of other benefits that come with the job. So those are the six components that make up the compensation of someone working for an investment bank. They do vary from division to division, but hopefully that was useful for you to gain an insight. Now, if you wanna find out a bit more about the specifics in terms of salary figures, check out some of these videos and I will see you in the next video. Peace.